Dear Father God, we thank you for what you have done, what you're doing, and what will happen in the future when we get to go home with you. Lord, you're so wonderful and marvelous, and we thank you. Be with us tonight as we worship you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading tonight is from Psalm chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. A pastor friend and his wife uh, really like to hike. That's their passion, they hike. And he recently wrote in a blog, and I read his blog, so I want to share part of his blog with you. He said, like many people these days, my wife and I had to cancel our vacation." We were hoping to hike in Colorado mountains where we enjoy the cool air, the mountain lakes, the deep blue sky during the day, and all the stars in the sky at night. Sometimes while we're gazing at the wondrous view of all the mountains, we can't keep from recalling that line from Psalm 119, or Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. Since we spend most of our time indoor working, when we are hiking in the mountains, it's easy to embrace an exaggerated view of God's creation. It's benevolent. It's where we go to recreate ourselves and find a refuge from the confines of the office. And since nearly all of our tricks in the mountains have been exhilarating and restorative, we sort of are tempted to believe God and creation are so intimately interrelated that it is in creation where God really meets us, where we really re- He really reveals Himself to us and shines forth all His majesty. But I did say, nearly all of our hikes have been exhilarating and restorative. On one hike, we found ourselves well above the tree line in the midst of a powerful thunderstorm. The claps of thunder were booming, and the ground to sky lightning threatened all around us. It was not restorative, but it was exhilarating in the fact that it was terrifying. It was a potent reminder that if God only or chiefly revealed himself to us in creation, we might be able to conclude he was all-powerful, everywhere present, and perhaps all-knowing, but that would be about it. In our experience of such a God, we, it would be incomplete. Benevolent conditions one day, conditions to destroy us the next. And in this case, the only lines that would be true about God in Psalm 19 would be those awe-inducing lines that remind us of creation's great expanse and yet its inability to tell us how much we are related to God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth of speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Well, my friend's right. Those are beautiful words. But if this were all the psalmist had to say about God, it would be incomplete. It would leave us attempting to understand God's plan for us by trying to understand knowledge. Knowledge about God's creation. Where we're unable to hear the speech and the words that is declaring. We might assume God's speech, His speaking through the marvels of creation was mighty and powerful. But we would probably also conclude he was distant from us. And maybe he really wasn't interested in us. However, there's two parts to that psalm. Psalm 19 has two parts. The longer second part, the psalmist bears witness to the goodness of God's law. It describes God's law. The the psalmist uses several biblical synonyms. 
There's decrees, precepts, commandments, and ordinances. But whatever word he uses, they amount to the same thing. And in that psalm, God is, his law is perfect. It reveals the soul, it makes us wise, rejoices the heart, and enlightens the eyes. It is the knowledge and wisdom coming to us from God in words and speech that we can understand. For the ancient Israelites, God's law demonstrates his interest in us. It demonstrates his intention for us and even his profound care for us. Just as God ordered creation according to his own divine plan, God's revelation of the law brings the gift of order to human society. Therefore, it is to be praised. It's to be admired as a gracious gift. And when it is followed, it creates a condition for peace and well-being for all people. And in that psalm, it also includes orphans and widows and aliens. It is ultimately the expression of God's love for his people, first revealed to our ancient ancestors and passed on by countless other people. The goodness of God's law informs how we are to live together in justice, righteousness, and in peace. But, sometimes we become so familiar with the with the law and dependent upon it, a society grounded in law that it's easy for us to take it for granted, or even worse, abuse it, fail to protect it, or allow the miscarriage of it. But when we see societies where the law is abused or where it fell, or fell completely apart, we also see people who see nothing in the world with real value or or experience not even social order there is no justice righteousness and peace but when we read the story of God's giving the law in Exodus we remember that the people were frightened by lightning and and thunder on the mountain just like my friends were on their mountain God revealed himself to them in creation frightened them and now we know from Exodus that the people came to Moses and begged him to talk to God for them. They wanted Moses to serve as their intercessor between God and themselves. God, God's revelation is best found in his words for us. Revealed in the gracious gift of his law, which creates communities of righteousness and peace. Communities where people and creation can flourish. And we Christians, we confess that we come to know God through the words of his Bible, given first to the chosen people, then to his holy church. Above all, it comes through Jesus Christ, who is the word. And they are all bound together. The Bible, through the word, and the community of faith, God reveals himself to us, and all the glories of creation wouldn't help either one of them. So the heavens do declare the glory of God, but his word reveals himself to us. There are two parts to Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, but his words reveal him to us. And now we have a song from Mitch Marhanka. <laughs> Holy name, I 
prayer our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for creation and all its beauty. Thank you for the word and the fellowship of believers. Lord, it's through them that we can have fellowship and relationship with you. Even in the storms, we know you're there. and We know that you love us. And Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us tonight, and I'd like to invite you to join us again this coming Sunday morning at 10 o'clock Central Time. Now the Lord will give strength unto his people, the Lord will bless his people with peace, amen.